As most of you know, I own a Volkswagen ID7 Pro for six months and I owned a ID3 Pro before that for three and a half years. So now I have for a week a Tesla Model 3 dual motor, long range, the new version Highland with the newest software and new, the new features and everything. And I want to see how it is. I drove yesterday already over 300 kilometers and I will do an extra video about the software, how different it is to Volkswagen software. It's a big thing, especially the app and the speed, just how everything works. But we're gonna drive, see how driving is. Um, in other videos I will do a range test, a charging test and all of this. It's so different in many things. Some things are better, some things are missing, some things... I can't say it, some things... Uh, are weird. <laughs> but everyone has a different taste and a different, wants different things and I get it. If you want a car that is powerful, agile, and a sporty drive feel, this is exactly what you need. There are going to be two videos uh, that say if this car is for you or not, <laughs> because that's interesting. Um, the software is just amazing, and the app, what you can do with it, it's really insane. And it works really, really well and fast. And this is amazing. And I didn't even talk about uh, updates. So there are so many over the air updates that this car gets and you get a notification in the app and you just say, uh, do update now. And it doesn't take eight hours. It takes half an hour or so. It's like updating a tablet or a phone. It's really done really quickly. There are, they're so frequent. So it's a lot of updates in short time. And it doesn't mean it's all bug fixes. It's mean new features, new stuff that's, that's coming and that's really awesome. On top of everything, it's a very efficient car, so with 50% you can go fast and can go very far. I did my range test, it's awesome result that the car showed me. And it charges amazing. I charged with a supercharger, got a peak of 239 kilowatts, and even at Ionity I got 192 kilowatts. Like I said, with 50% you have enough range to go on to the next charger, uh, till that 50% it charges amazing um, it has enough cooling and heating and you can heat up the battery in the morning when you heat up the car in the winter it does it automatically when you navigate to a charger it heats up the battery preconditioning the trunk is gigantic it's not very high and to get in it's a bit weird I, I almost hit my head here on this all the time but it's very very deep you have a second pocket that's gigantically deep and of course we have a trunk in the front let's look like I said, it's extremely big, even though this is the all-wheel drive version. There's a motor behind here. There's AC and, I don't know, heating, everything, heat pump. There's cooling of the battery. There's everything in here and still you have this much space for a frunk. Awesome. I'm on the rear seats of the Model 3 and this seat is in my uh, position. I'm 180 centimeters, six feet tall and I'm sitting a bit up straight but that's in a lot of cars. This is totally uh, normal. I can still put my feet underneath the seat even though the seat is on the lowest point. I have enough leg room here, that's no problem. Headroom also enough because of the the panoramic roof i'm not touching the roof this is awesome i have two usb c's here i have this armrest with two cup holders and i have my own screen here in the rear where i can do music uh, uh, playing a game and uh, seat heating and my own ventilation and everything i can adjust this here in the back as well so two grown-ups can sit here amazingly comfortable the third one in the middle like with every other car is it has is not that comfortable and you can still see the screen and everything this is really awesome the seats are comfortable and the armrest is also comfortable. This is a nice environment to sit in. In the front seats I can 
adjust the seat very well with every uh, possible thing that you need and it's saved with your key or with your car so uh, the same as the position of the steering wheel and the mirror so when you get in with your card it will uh, put everything to these settings and when you when someone else is driving to their settings and to their height and everything the steering wheel so what you miss all over is the lack of buttons and even less than in other cars. The steering wheel has a few buttons. We have our indicator in here. We can flash. Uh, we have, can see the camera and we can wipe once or spray it and we have voice commands and then we have our two main instruments up and down left and right scrolling that does left for the music or for the wiper if you turn that on and right for uh, your cruise control and of course you can adjust the mirrors and the steering wheel with it you have enough uh, compartments here to play stuff we have two usb uh, two uh, wireless charging here a 12 volt outlet two cup holders another usb-c here really awesome no air vents the air vents is done in the infotainment screen so you cannot adjust it by hand and we have this beautiful ambient light space wise i have so much headroom no problem at all the seats are very comfortable it's a very nice environment to sit in and by the way the, the sunshade thing here of course it has a light for the mirrors and you can extend it as well it's not just uh, that you can take it out that's that's not usual the screen is amazing it works amazing it's really fast it's like every modern tablet and it works amazingly well i like it the blinker indicator that you have to press buttons you get used to it but when you drive for many 20 years like i do almost 30 and then always there was a stock for a blinker where you don't have to think and now you have to to look I mean after a while you don't have to look you know this is the right this is the left and when you go in around roundabout and the steering wheel is upside down then you have to look what side is it now and this is not a it's not the biggest deal but I don't see the the positive about it <laughs> it's the same as a lot of people complain about Volkswagen cars and the the, the touch sensitive buttons where's the, the, the positive about it I, I, and, and I get it and it's here the same the stocks I find them not very good so pressing them so that the, the, the adaptive cruise control is on is a bit clumsy how you press it and the adjusting but overall in here what you can do is just amazing but again this is will be in a different video driving yes no stock so I have to do it with the display and it shows you here front for driving forward and if you tap it you're in park and if you go in to down you are in reverse in reverse you see the camera in the rear which tilts down it's not amazing the side cameras are pretty good the overview here it shows a layout what it looks like I will prefer a camera so 360 degree camera so I know what this here this is grass this doesn't bug me but if there would be a car that would be important it shows cars it recognizes cars but I don't know I would I would prefer a normal 360 degree camera uh. yeah there are no drive modes not needed <laughs> Um, and regen is very strong and can be adjusted and controlled very nicely with the uh, accelerator pedal it works just fine the animation here that shows you car and the road and everything I find it distracting and totally unnecessary it's just a show off what the hardware can do I don't get it I don't need it so I would prefer if this would be gone and I see the whole map and this is just just get rid of this uh, I don't need this when I'm parking I need this but not when I'm driving this is just distracting and it's moving around because oh with the cameras it has to see what's going on uh, I don't like it at all when you drive yes there's no head-up display there's no cockpit in front of you it's very empty but it's very empty my ID7 as well and I have a head-up display and I have a cockpit and I prefer that yes I have my speed up here but I still have to look down I, I, I cannot just look at the road and here is my speed limit warning 
that I could turn off here, but I leave it on so I can hear it in a second as well. So yes, I still have to look down, where am I, what's happening here, where do I have to go and all of this because there's nothing there. In a head-up display, I could see my speed, state of charge. I have to go off in two kilometers and all of this. It needs that head-up display. Um, I'm not a fan not having this. I would like to have that. The view outside of the car. In the front, all fine. You sit high, you sit very low, but you sit way higher than the front is, so you can see very nicely over there. That's awesome. Also to the side here. The rear is the exact opposite. You, I cannot see a lot. The side mirrors I find very small and they sit in a weird position, especially the right one. It's very low and the, 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 the rear view mirror is, is the worst because the window in the back is very, very high. So uh, if there's a car behind me, I can see maybe the head like this, but I don't see the car very well. I've tested the sound system yesterday on this car and it is amazing. It sounds really well. Uh, good bass, good highs, great sound. Let's do the cruise control. I press here, it takes the speed that I'm driving and then with up and down I can adjust the, the speed and if I press it fast then it's five kilometers an hour change and then on the, to the side, to the left or the right, I can adjust the distance and it goes from seven to one and when I put it on five it just keeps the speed very nicely. Um, and the distance. What I'm missing is resume. There is no resume button for the cruise control. So if I turn it off, it's off and it takes again the speed that I'm driving or the speed that is allowed on that road. But it doesn't ha have the 80 anymore. I have to accelerate to 80 and turn it back on or turn it back on and do it manually. And that's, I don't know why. Res resume would be nice. The autopilot, press it twice, autopilot is on, he shows me the blue lines, I get the audio message and it does it. It doesn't recognize my touch if I just do it slightly, I get a warning up here, we're going to see that in a second. Now, and then when it does that, I press hard and I steer and sometimes it doesn't recognize me and then if you do that too long it will pr uh, pro prohibit you from using the autopilot for the whole drive. You have to stop and then you can use it again. Overall the steering works great. Cruise control sometimes slows down, down for no reason. I'm driving by a car and or and then it slows down and or in a, in a, in a construction zone. There was no reason for it to slow down but it just does it. I had that yesterday a few times. Now we're gonna accelerate this car. Uh, it should have around 450 to 500 horsepower. We'll see what acceleration we get. As always I have Draghi outside of this car here. GPS measurement that measures the acceleration and we do it in both ways to see what we get. Three, two, one, full. 4.39 seconds, not valid as always, it's a bit downhill here and it doesn't like it. So we're gonna do it in the other direction. Fat in here. This car makes me look fat. <laughs> not that I'm not fat. <laughs> but even more, I'm all jiggly. Four point four eight seconds and it's verified so everything's fine so let's say 4.5 seconds which is a really good number and uh, good acceleration feels good no spinning wheels you feel in control everything is fine that was nice this video was supported by Tronity a must-have for every Volkswagen Tesla and Ford owner but also for other brands with the app or the, in the browser you can have an overview of your monthly cost your charging sessions and all of your trips there's also a hundred percent tax compliant driver's logbook my viewers get 25% off if they use the link in the description below on the highway driving 130 It's really quiet in here, really nice. Way better than the Model 3 before. So the new facelift is amazing when it comes to, to road noise. Feels good. Feels stable. 
Also the suspension. Uh, it's not extremely comfortable, it's still on the sporty side, but it's better than before. And Tesla did that middle thing, a bit sporty, a bit comfortable, where Volkswagen goes more in the comfortable uh, uh, direction. And with DCC, yes, you can set it to sport, but it's not the same. This is more sporty and feels better. Um, when it comes to sportiness, comfort, you, you just feel bumps and things more on the road and it makes it a bit more unstable when you drive, uh, but that's just how it is. 150, and here this is what I mean, the car slows down, this is what I'm talking about with cruise control and it's slowing down in a corner when there's on the highway. Not a lot of cars do that, I had that in the Volvo, but driving 150, Still uh, 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 quiet in here, amazingly quiet, and it's a bit of a bumpy ride, but still okay. So I just drove 190 for 10, 20 seconds, and it's not nice. The car, the, the, the steering is not nice. Um, I'm sure some people get used to it, I don't. It's very direct, but in the middle, there's a, a, a portion where it doesn't do anything and then it does something. The car sport, with the sportiness is jumping around when it's not perfectly uh, flat. It's not a nice feeling to drive fast in this car. It's the wind, you feel everything. Yeah, I'm stressed out even at 180. Not a nice way to drive higher speeds that's way better in a lot of other cars. And I have driven sporty cars like the Kia EV6 GT that on the highway at high speeds is amazing. I mean, BMW i7, of course, this is extremely comfortable, even at 200, no problem at all. So, good road, 190. It's better on a, on a, on a better road, but at above 170, it's just, it's not nice. Steering, I feel the trucks when I go by that are moving. It's just not, above 160, 170, it's not a nice feeling. But the acceleration is amazing. I don't know why you need a performance model when this already accelerates like crazy and enough. I don't need more power than this. This is real amazing. If you want to follow me on Instagram, BatteryLife1, and if you want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. And here on YouTube, there's also channel membership. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.